Hello, it's Don Michelle from Boho Tarot, and welcome to another mod with me, where we create a deep and meaningful bond with the cards through creative expression and deck modification. Today, we are going to be edging and trimming my new Christmas tarot deck. So this is a, it's a cute deck that I found um, on Etsy, and it has, um, has really interesting cardstock. It's kind of matte. Um, it's very, very thin, but it's pretty matte, and I think it's probably going to hold up really well, um, except for it's already got a bow in it, and I haven't even used it yet because I just took it out of the packaging. Um, the backs are pretty cute. Uh, the printing is a little bit fuzzy on some of the cards, but I really um, love the Christmas vibe to it, and... Um, especially this time of year, and I think it works really well for that. So this is definitely a cute little deck that um, I think, you know, works totally well right out of the box, but you know me, I just not a huge fan of borders, and um, I think the white borders, I mean, it looks fine because the backs are light, but um, all of these images are kind of uh, antiqued looking. They're almost a little bit distressed. So I thought it would be really cool to just kind of complete that distressed look to it and to trim off um, these white borders. It does have a, a title down here at the bottom and um, a nice contained image within this section as well. So um, I think this is definitely a deck that you would need the titles on because although you can make the associations, um, in the cards, it's it's not apparent. It's not like readily. I mean, this one is a little bit more, but some of them are just a little bit more of a challenge to um, make the connection to. Just because, you know, it's a totally Christmas themed deck. It's not a diss on the deck at all. I think it's really cute and I really um, love using it at this time of year. But um, without those uh, titles down there, it wouldn't necessarily make the association to like see this one for the Four of Cups. But I think overall it's really well, a well done little deck. Um, and I just thought it would look really cool to kind of give it that vintage-y um, antique look because to me this looks kind of like a vintage Christmas card. And um, I think it would be cool to take those white borders off and then distress the um, deck down, at least on the sides. Um, possibly the back. I don't, I don't know if that'll hold up. This is kind of, um, the cardstock is, is, it's interesting. I don't, um, really, um, I don't really know exactly what the cardstock type is. Um, it feels like a sort of thinner version of the Roots and Wings a little bit. Um, but it's definitely got that kind of matte rubbery card stock to it. Um, it's just different. It's different than anything else I have. Um, I think, I think I will like it. Um, but seeing as this is a new deck, let's just, before we even, I should probably take these out before we even, um, cut into it, let's just see how it shuffles first. Just to, just to check. It does shuffle really well. It rifle shuffles really well. Um, it sticks a little bit coming back together. And if I do it that way, I'm just going to reinforce that bow. So that didn't work very well. Um, it does rifle shuffle well. Kind of sticks here and there, but that's again due to that matte cardstock. It's hard to get a matte cardstock that doesn't stick. Um, the Hay House decks are, are really good ones. They don't stick. You can see it's very flexible. Like, I mean, I can really bend it. So that's the reason it's probably getting the bow. It probably sat and then started to bow like that. But I think because it's so flexible, you could probably work that bow right back out. I mean, look how flexible that is. And it's not like it's like, it's thin, but it's not like cheap thin. It feels substantial. It feels like it's going to hold up even though it's a thinner cardstock. It does stick a little bit though. You can see like as I'm trying to fan it, it's clumping, but some of those little things work out um, some with wear because again, like I said, this is a brand new deck for me. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna stop rambling here because I know what you guys are here to see is the actual modification. Okay, so I think this is going to be a pretty straightforward modification. Um, I am gonna use, it does have two extra cards, so I am gonna use, um, I think I'm just gonna keep one 
for, um, let's keep this one, just to have as a reference later on. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and do all my testing with, with this card. I think for trimming it's gonna be fine. I think it's gonna trim fine. And um, what I'm really concerned about, or not concerned, what I'm really interested to see is how the ink is gonna apply to this cardstock because it's not your traditional cardstock. So that's a little bit of my, um, of my concern here. So I'm gonna follow my basic process, put my trimmer in. I am gonna do one side at a time as I always do to make sure that I get that um, nice even cut to it. And of course I am not on a line again and I do not like when that happens, but you know, maybe I should try to make some lines on my board or something. Renee and I talked about that at one point. Um, I'm going to use my ruler to just make sure that my cut is going to be where I want it to be. I could probably back that up even just a little bit more, but now I'm really in between lines if I do that. So let's go ahead and just, nope, I can tell you right now that's not far enough. I can see it. So I'm going to scoot it over a little bit more. This is another reason why I love um, when they have extra cards because I can use this time too. That should be a little bit closer. I can use that to really determine whether or not I'm in the right place. And I am right on that line. So I can see like here I swung a little bit out and I still got some of that white in there. So this is going to be a really... Really little deck. It's um, not standard tarot size, so it's going to be a little deck when I'm done with it, but I think it will be cute. It does have um, this bottom border sticks out a little bit further than this inner border does, so that's going to be probably where my issue is coming from. And I didn't pull down straight. Real important that you pull your lever down straight. So I'm going to go ahead and set that one aside. And I think that that's going to work just fine. Um, like I said, I'm going to take the borders off. You could probably also just distress around these whites if that bothered you as well. And you could probably take that down. But I am going to use the distress inks on this deck. So we'll see how that works um, when we get to that point. So to start with, let's just go ahead and get this deck trimmed. So we're gonna start with um, our right side and we're gonna go ahead and trim all of those off. And then we'll flip the deck around and do the other side. I'm just going to test one more time because I am right on that line. And in fact, either this is matte, so it's not sliding on the um, on the board, but I am getting a little bit of white on the side at the bottom. So I'm wondering if I need to scoot over just a tiny bit more. Always need to check whenever we're scooting a deck one way or the other. This is going to be a little bit difficult to do with this sticky stock, but... Um, doesn't look like any of the words. This one maybe is the closest, but even still that doesn't come right up to the edge. We're always, I'm always looking to see if the words are right up against the edge of the card because I don't want to accidentally cut off any words. So I could actually just move it over a little bit more and I could hit that line. That's always good when I can be on a line, right? So let's just try well, I say try, but now once I do this with one card, I have to do them with, with all of them or my um, cuts will be completely off. So I need to make sure that this is really what I want to do. So just going to check with my ruler. That should cut off that last little bit. You can see, like, I just took off a sliver. But that got that, that little green border on the side completely off. 
So I think that's gonna work. So that's what we're gonna go with. I'm gonna roll with that. I'm gonna cut this side off and then we will check back in. Okay, so I have the whole right side of the deck cut off down to that lovely border list. So we're just gonna flip it around and repeat the process going the other way. Um, I have mentioned many times before, the reason I do one side at a time is because it makes for a more uniform deck. I don't know if it'll show up here on camera, but it gets quite um, a bit closer than if you're just uh, free form cutting all the sides at once. And using those measurements helps to um, create a more cohesive deck in terms of its sizing, which tends to help it shuffle better. So now we're just going to repeat the process on the other side. And I'm just checking with my ruler to make sure that that is where I want my card. Um, these are going pretty quick here in terms of, I think that's actually on my card. In terms of trimming, it took me about 15 minutes to do the one side. So I'm gonna pop this one in here and trim off that other side. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish um, trimming off this side of the deck and then we'll check back in. Okay, so I finished the other side of our deck and real quick, I forgot to do my test card. Um, the reason I'm cutting this one down is because um, I want to be able to use it to test my uh, inks when I go to ink it. And the way ink applies sometimes to the cut edge of a card versus the, um, the well, it's a cut edge still, but the way sometimes the ink applies to a non-trimmed card versus a trimmed card can sometimes be different. So that's the reason I am going ahead and trimming this one along with it because it will be my tester for my inks. So now that I have um, the two sides cut off here, like it's gonna be a cute little pocket deck when I'm done. Um, now we just need to go ahead and cut the tops and bottoms off. And let's just go ahead and do our um, borders off the bottom. I am going to leave the title, so I'm just going to be trimming that white border off. And hopefully that looks like it's about right. Use my ruler to make sure I'm going to be trimming that all off. Mark it with my washi. And there we go, taking that white border off the bottom. I kind of miss some of it. Um, I've noticing that this cardstock is not, um, because it's matte, it's not slipping around too bad on my trimmer. What um, I am finding that I have to pay attention to is making sure that I'm bringing the trimmer down um, straight. Because sometimes, I mean, there is, there's not much give, but there's a little bit in there. And sometimes that can cause a little bit of a, um, of a wobble, just slightly enough. I mean, we're talking like millimeters here. But when you're cutting that close to the edge and you're trying to get right on that borderline, a millimeter can make a difference. And um, this deck, I don't, I got to tell you, working with it, I don't know if you guys can see it, but... There's ink all over my hands and I, I mean, granted, there's usually ink on my hands. I won't lie. I always have distressed ink or coffee stain from all the journals and stuff that I make, but, um, I did wash my hands before I started because I always want to make sure that I'm not transferring anything over onto my cards, but I don't know if you can see that, but there is black ink coming off or dark ink coming off all over my hands as I'm working with these cards. So that is something to keep in mind. I don't know if it's just because it's a new deck or if that's just gonna be something that happens with this deck, but um, I did notice it, so I did wanna mention it because my fingers are black now. And you can definitely tell the hand that I'm 
grabbing the cards with and running my fingers across the cards is definitely getting more black on it than the like my thumb. You can see my thumb is the only thing that seems to be really touching the cards on my right hand side. So I did just want to point that out because that um, that's just something I noticed. Another thing I did want to um, mention with using the washi. Now, a lot of times when we're trimming decks and we're trimming the bottoms where the titles are, sometimes if we don't have a measurement, and I have done this, and this is why I mention it, um, especially if we're like watching videos or something, which I am doing right now. I have one of um, Dustin from Modern Metaf Metaphysics Man. I have one of his videos. It's actually paused at the moment because I'm talking, but um, I tend to watch videos while I trim, and that means that I'm not hundred percent paying attention to what I'm doing I mean I am I'm paying attention to what I'm doing but I'm also listening you know to um, what Dustin's talking about over here and occasionally I look over because I have a, a um, um, not an iPad but it's the the top of a the Windows surface thing anyway I have a screen over here to my right and so I can glance over and I can see the videos and occasionally like when somebody shows a deck or something, you know, I'll look over or, um, you know, things of that nature. And sometimes before I use the washi, I would be watching things and I would accidentally cut a title off. Now I've, I've done that before on actually more than one deck because I wasn't paying attention. Using the washi always makes sure that I'm, uh, not cutting off more than I mean to because even though my I might be a little bit distracted um, because you know Dustin's showing cool things over here um, I'm making sure that I'm not accidentally cutting off the title because I have done that before where I'm just trimming along the border or trimming along the bottom and then I'm like all of a sudden I realize that instead of just cutting the border I've actually gone here and cut the title so with the washi I'm always running my card up against the washi. That helps me keep from doing that because like I said, I have done that many times before. So now you can see that I've got that white border off the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and um, finish up. I think I'll just go ahead and finish up trimming the deck at this point. I'm gonna finish up the bottoms, take off the tops, and then I will um, be corner rounding it just because all of that is a um, you know fairly lengthy process that you don't necessarily need to spend time here sitting with me doing that and then we'll come back and we'll check back in and we'll um, talk about some colors and what I'm going to do to um, edge this deck and maybe I don't know we might see if we can do something to this back I mean the back is fine it's not like it's bad design or anything but it looks a little bit fresh and clean compared to this kind of vintagey artwork on the back on the front so I don't know if that's even going to be um, possible with this particular cardstock, especially because this ink is coming off. So it means that this ink is coming off already on my hands. I'm a little bit concerned about putting any sort of ink on the back, but we'll check it out um, in a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and finish trimming the deck, corner rounding it, and then we will check back in. Okay, so I have finished edging and corner rounding the entire deck, and look how cute it looks. This to me, this is just massive improvement. This is kind of, I think, what it should have looked like from the get-go. I mean, this is fine. You can see it with the with the white border, but I mean, just look at it now. It's like the perfect little pocket deck. I love small decks. Um, anyway, I'm really pleased with the way the trimming came out. And now um, I want to go ahead and edge it. I am like, I don't know if you guys can see that, but my fingers are super black. Um, there's a lot of, and I can feel it like, you know, on my skin, I can feel whatever this, this ink is, it's sort of coming off these cards and, um, I can actually feel it on my skin. So I'm actually like really looking forward to washing my hands, but I know that, um, I'm just going to get them even more yucky here because I'm going to um, be using markers. So I did, um, I used my, my Katamaro Pro to round the corners and I just used the small, corner rounder um, because it's a small deck anyway and these I believe these are vintage Christmas cards um, I could be wrong because I, I don't remember what I read about it it did take a little bit to get here um, 
from overseas. So I believe that's what they are. But anyway, I wanted to keep that sort of Christmas card look. So I decided to use just those small corner rounders on it um, because I didn't want to like, I didn't want to over round it basically. Okay, so my thought is what I want to do is to um, actually distress this deck in general. Um, but like I said, I'm a bit, I'm a bit concerned about the cardstock because the ink is the ink that's on here is already coming off. So I'm a little concerned about adding more ink. Um, I thought I would do the a green color um, to match the backs and to match the titles at the bottom, and then distress it with my uh, my vintage ink there. But um, I thought maybe we'd we'd just take a look first because, like I said, I'm a little bit concerned about this cardstock um, being able to take the ink. I do have a couple of different greens here. Um, um, I thought for this particular one, an art marker might be better. Um, but you know, I I don't know. I mean, that's I like that green color. The art markers tend to bleed a little bit, and generally that irritates me, especially after I've trimmed a deck. And you guys all know, right? It irritates me when they bleed. Um, and these do have a bit of a smell to them because they're the alcohol-based markers. Um, that color I think is too bright. So I think I'm liking this is a Blick Studio um, marker. Generally, I don't I don't use this one often because it generally does bleed a little bit, but I thought, you know what, we'll just, we'll give it a try. I'm just going to do the one side and see if that, if it even goes on there. So it's looking like that it is bleeding a little bit, but it's actually a great color match to the, um, to the back. So I think that even if it bleeds a tiny bit on the back, that it's going to be okay. So that that's a good good choice. That makes me happy. I mean, look how close in color that is. So I think what we're going to do is edge it in this. So we're going to set this one aside. Um, always with markers, stamps, anything. It's always helpful to wipe off the excess. Although you know, I don't know if it's going to matter with this deck. The um, the other thing that I was curious about was I was curious to see if I could, um, which I'm going to play with with this card, if I could distress the backs a little bit. So um, I'm going to get, it's a vintage photo, that's the wrong stamp. Maybe it's not. I never know. Um, the vintage photo might be a little bit dark. I should have my stamp pad out here. I have to get that if I end up doing that, but this is really what the distress inks are used for, right? To distress cards. Like if I decide to do this, though, this is going to take a while because, you know, 78 cards, distressing all at once, but just curious. I'm going to go ahead and distress this one, and then while I edge them in green, I'll let it sit and dry and see if that's actually going to stick, right? Like, is it gonna come off all over my hands? So I'm gonna have to wash my hands before I can even tell. And I didn't do it like perfectly and that's okay because I want it to be vintage. And also just because, you know, let's just see, can I distress the words? Let's just see what all we can do with this deck. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna try that. We're gonna see how that goes. I'm gonna set this aside and let it dry. But look how much cooler that looks. Isn't that cool? I love distressed inks. See now it looks very vintagey. Again, these white white letters, but I can distress if it works on the front or if it works on the back, it'll work on the front, right? So I could distress the the white text as well and make this a very vintage deck. So I'm going to set this one aside um, for now and we're going to let it dry and I'm going to edge the deck and then I'm going to attempt to get all this black off my hands so that I can see as I'm working with the um, cards with the distress ink if I'm getting any transfer off onto my hands because that's really what my concern is is that if I do this I don't really want all of this coming off all over my hands every time I use this deck um, although the fact that the ink in the front is already coming off is doesn't bode well for that 
Um, but anyway, so we're gonna set that aside, let it dry, and then we might end up actually distressing a deck, like for real, not just the edges. We're gonna maybe distress the whole deck. That would be fun. Um, so for right now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to edge the entire deck because regardless of what I do here, I do want to do the edges in green and then distress over the top of that because I at least want the sides to, to be that distressed look just to finish it off nicely. So we'll do about half the deck maybe and come back and take a take a look at where we're at. Maybe at that point we can check in on this card and see how that's going. So I'm gonna go ahead and just get started and we'll check back in in a little bit. Okay, so I finished up edging um, roughly half the deck. I have tried to go wash some of the black off my hands, but it's I think gonna take more than just a quick scrub to get those off. But so I've got half the deck orange, orange edged in the green. So you can see here, look at that. See, even that just looks cool. I could probably totally leave it at that. It matches the backs really well. So I'm really happy with that um, color choice. And I think, yeah, it would be totally fine to leave it just like this. Um, I did get a few places where it kind of bled a little bit on the back, but it's such a close match to that um, green color that I don't think it really is going to be an issue. And of course, I've only done the one coat, um, so you can kind of see some areas where the white is showing through, but I've only done the one coat because I am going to distress it because this deck has a very vintage look to it. You know, it's vintage um, Christmas cards. So I thought, you know, just we're gonna make it a vintage deck because this compared to this, it does look a little bit weird. This looks a little bit more contemporary. This looks more, um, you know, antique. Uh, same with the white letters in this very um, more modern font, but you know, no biggie. It's still a great little deck. Um, not wild about the black coming off, but what I wanna know is, um, if this is going to be coming off on my hands. So let's just give it a good rub, right? And it doesn't look like it is, so that's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and um, let's just leave this side of the deck as it is so we can compare. And let's go ahead and um, distress this deck. Hold on one second, let me get my little distressing pad. Okay, so here's my super fancy um, distress pad. So this is a piece of cardboard with wax paper taped on. That's all it is. You can see how much ink is on here. But this allows me to basically do what I was doing over here to just run it off the edge and not have to um, worry about getting it all over my table. So what we're gonna do, um, I do wanna do the sides, but we can probably just do those as we do the back. Um, and it's very possible that as I was distressing the back of this, it might be getting on the sides too. So we're just gonna start with the side or with the backs and we're gonna go from there. So basically all we're gonna do, hopefully I don't shake the camera a ton, but I'm just gonna go ahead and rub this um, distressed ink over the backs of these cards. And I'm not even worrying you know, too much about how I'm going about it if some of them are leaving if I get some white spaces in there, that's fine too. I do just wanna get the edge. Um, they will all be a little bit different with me doing this and that's totally cool too. I mean, the basic pattern is obviously going to be the same, but yeah. Um, this is definitely more of, a, of a, a labor of love, I suppose, but I use Distress Ink all the time, so I'm pretty, pretty quick at it. Um, sometimes just going around the edges too and leaving the fronts. If I were doing cards, regular paper, this is how I would distress it. So let's just go ahead and do that while we're at it. So basically like distressing, um, you know, paper. So hopefully this will hold up, but time will tell. 
Um, not a huge deal if it if it doesn't. You know, if it comes off my hands, I like I said, my hands are always dirty. I know that sounds terrible, but I mean, I always have ink on my hands. So if it's um, you know, if it rubs off on my hands while I'm using it, it's not a big deal because, like I said, I almost always have some sort of distress ink or coffee stain or paint or something. Okay, so I'm going to finish up doing um, this half of the deck and then we'll check back in and see what it looks like. Okay, so at this point I have distressed the back of all of these cards. So basically half the deck and because the text on the front, pull this one, was really kind of white in comparison, um, I decided to just run the stamp over those real quick too. So I just thought I'd show you, it's like super quick, just like that. Um, I'm not, you know, completely, totally filling it in, but I'm trying to fill it in fairly well. So let's take a look now and I thought we would just kind of maybe compare them. I'll pull it in here so we can see. Oops, so let's take a look now. So you can see that, um, hopefully, whoops, I'm in shot. So you can see now that the um, text is definitely a little bit more muted on this side that I've distressed. You can see the edges. I've added that distressed um, ink to the sides as well. So it's helped fill in those areas. And it also, um, you know, gives it a nice kind of aged and vintage look. But the big change, I think, besides the trimming is the backs. So now I've distressed the backs of the deck and they look very vintagey now. So when we compare that to this side, right, you can see they blend in a little bit better. And even with the distressed on the bottom. So I think that that is actually really cool. I'm actually quite pleased that it took the distressed ink so well because I think it looks really um, great aged. Like it's like a well-worn, it looks vintage, like the fronts of the cards and the back of the cards and the text all kind of matches now. And I think that's really cool. So I just wanted to um, pop in and do this little comparison of half the deck done. And um, so I'm going to go ahead and finish up the rest of these cards and then we'll check back in at the end and take a look at the finished version. Okay, so I have got the whole deck finished. Let's pull it in and take a look. So you can see here I've got the distressed ink over the top, which I just did as I distressed the backs. So now look at it. How cool are those? They look totally vintage now. And then of course we have the fronts that are all borderless, which is lovely. And I distressed the text on the bottom of all of them um, as well, just so that they weren't quite so stark white. So here, let's take a look at an original. So here was the deck previous. You can see, I mean, it's not much smaller. This is not a very large deck anyway. Um, so it's not a ton smaller, so it didn't take off a ton, but it definitely has a more vintage look now, and I like it borderless. And then huge difference, I think, on the back. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's just look at my hands. See, this looks normal for me. You know, ink and everything all over them at my hands. The black is actually from the cards, but now I have brown added to that and some green. Um, so let's go ahead and see how they shuffle. And they still shuffle just fine because, like I've mentioned in many of my other videos, if you want your deck to shuffle after you've trimmed it, you have to use the measurements. If you don't get the cards exactly the right size or all, you know, pretty dang close, I mean, there's a few of these that are not, um, it's not perfect. There's a few of them that are a bit um, taller, smaller than the others, you know, just off by a little bit. But... Using the measurements makes a huge difference. I don't know why that is, to be perfectly honest with you, but it just is what it is. The um, decks that I trimmed previously um, to using measurements don't shuffle like this. I cannot riffle shuffle. Whoops. <laughs> that was a terrible shuffle, but um, I can't riffle shuffle my decks that I trimmed previously without using the measurements. So when I used to just throw a deck in the trimmer, chop off sides, and away I went, um, those ones don't really riffle shuffle very well. Though all the ones that I have um, trimmed using measurements, provided that the cardstock is not like that 400 GSM stuff that nobody can shuffle, riffle shuffle, right? Um, 
Provided it's normal cardstock, um, it still ruffle shuffles, which is really nice most of the time. Now, it does depend on the cardstock, so I am going to say most of the time. But let's just go ahead and lay a few cards out so we can see what this little deck looks like now. Um, it's definitely, you know, a Christmassy little deck. We get a nice little Christmas story here, which is just perfect for today, right? Um, for those of you who celebrate Christmas... Christmas Eve. Um, we do kind of a weird uh, combination of things in my family. So um, we, we do have a interesting kind of mix of, of things going on in our family, but we blend them all um, together into one beautiful holiday for everybody. Uh, total side tangent there, but look how gorgeous they look. Definitely looks like a Christmas card. Thank you so much for joining me for this mod with me. You'll find the links for this deck and all the products that I've used in this video in the description box below, along with link for my deck modification tutorials and my mod with me playlist. I hope you enjoyed this process and will join me again soon for more creative tarot for an inspired life.